Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're taking a look at the new Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom, Predacon Scorponok. And they go out of the way to put Predacon on here because in just the previous toy line, Earthrise, we already got a Scorponok. That, of course, being the G1 character as a Titan class. So they want to distinguish between the two. They're not the same character, or at least I don't think there's the uh, same character. I mean, who knows what kind of weirdness the Kingdom cartoon will put out. But classically, they're separate. Now, Scorponok, he's kind of interesting. He comes off as a little small here as a deluxe. And that's just because the old toy was a Mega Class, which is roughly equivalent to today's Voyager Class. So this guy feels really puny by comparison, but the scaling is actually perfect for what they're going for, which is, you know, show scaling. Scorponok was actually one of the smaller warriors out there in the Season 1 cast. So, you know, even though it feels weird getting him this small, it really is more accurate and works out better. So, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Scorponok's packaging, then we'll open it up, we'll see his instructions, we'll see his fate reveal card, and then we'll see Scorponok himself in both Scorpion and Robot modes. Sadly, I don't own the original Mega Class mold, so I won't really be able to do a comparison with that, but maybe I'll throw in a group shot at some point. And then, of course, at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Scorponok comes in your standard Kingdom Deluxe packaging. You get your half window here, we can see his upper body. Looking pretty good so far. Then you get this wraparound of his beast and robot modes. Um, honestly, the robot mode artwork, the face looks a little plain, a little boring there. Kind of like he's just emotionless. You can see him shooting his little cyber bee thing, which this toy does include, which is very cool. On the top, you just get your cave painted Predacon symbol, some more branding and stuff. And then on the back, we get our renders of Scorponok in Beast and Robot modes. He takes 24 steps to transform, so he's no slouch there. Here it shows off his little cyber bee thing, which I don't know if that actually shoots out of his claw or not. I'm leaning towards no, because they've really kind of nixed spring-loaded gimmicks for the most part. But we'll see. And you can see his missiles here on the other side, which is something from the show. I don't know if they're interchangeable. I guess we'll find out. But I do love that they included the bee, right? Because the, the whole cyber bee launching from his claw was like the big gimmick with the original Scorponok toy. So, you know, I like that they included that. Very, very cool. Also, it makes me hope we get either like a Botcon double punch or Sandstorm from this. It would just be a wasted opportunity if we didn't. And then here on the side, you get your standard Kingdom side panel. Okay, here is our golden disc card. This time, Black Arachnia. And, you know, it starts out with the same artwork that was in the, I think, first wave. Let's peel this off for something new and exciting. Look at that. So, this is a really cool card. And I, I saw people post about this one. So, it says, Ascends to Leader of the Predacons. Very nice. She's got a neat little staff there that kind of looks like her little hand claws on the top. And as a really neat little Easter egg in the background, it's a whole bunch of bug-based Predacons. And not ones from, like, you know, the actual Kingdom toy line or from, you know, the show or anything. It's kind of the, the lesser knowns, right? The toy-only characters. You can see they got Buzzsaw here. They got um, Retrax. Who's that in the background? Uh, Man Terror way in the back that looks kind of red. Um, there's a, what was this guy's name? The, the Fusor, like Mantis bug hybrid, I forget his name. And I'm not sure which one the guy on the bottom is. Can't really tell, but you get the idea. Uh, very cool Easter egg because you don't see a lot of representation of those characters, uh, really in any kind of media or anything. And especially in Kingdom. Kingdom has been strictly like season one cast members and then like the fossilizers and stuff which are new characters so really really neat i love the callbacks to the forgotten uh bug predacons out there dig that very much right, now we get our instructions for scorponok and again they call him predacon scorponok just to help differentiate him from the large titan guy from last year which is probably smart because not everyone's familiar with beast ward and they might be a little confused by that uh, standard logos, all that cool stuff. 
Here we get the how-to on storing his missile and little cyber bee accessory. They plug in a little 5 mil ports inside his claws, and they're interchangeable, but this is the official configuration. That's how it was on the uh, old toy where the bee was in his left claw. And then we get our transformation to scorpion mode, which finishes up on back. And you can see it's a pretty complex transformation. I dig it. And then the other how-to for how to store his little accessories. Here they have it reversed. Uh, I'm going to stay consistent and just keep the bee in the left claw, but you can do whatever you want. And finished product. Now we come to Scorpinox Beast Mode, and you can see it's an interesting blend of how he looks like as the original toy and on the show with the you know very interesting colors, the purple, the red legs, but his face and some features have been modified to more closely resemble a real-life scorpion especially like the kind of eyes on top and all that. So odd blend, odd blend. Um, from the top, he looks pretty good. I mean, there are some robot details you can see here. You know, you got like the Predacon symbol on the shoulder and then you got these like shoulder pads, which I mean, they try to conceal them, but they're, I mean, they're pretty obvious shoulder pads. The legs are interesting. They're on ball joints, but the middle two are on one joint. So they kind of cheaped out there. I mean, there was once upon a time when you get Beast Wars characters that had individual articulated limbs. Uh, Transmetal Scavenger is a real good example of that. He's got multiple joints per ant leg. So, you know, so, you know we've kind of fallen a ways away from the glory days of Beast Wars, but it's a new economy, new world, right? The tail can articulate at this joint right here and then the stinger itself is on a ball joint so it can move around a little arms obviously can move claws can open and close on both the top and bottom halves here you can see the missile accessory which is unfortunately hollow on this side a bunch of cheap skates and you get the b and you can unplug these if you want to here's a close-up look at the cyber b not as, you know, cool as the original where it actually like would unfold out of the claws like spring loaded and shot out, but yeah, whatever. It's a nice callback to a smaller toy. Or callback in a smaller toy, I suppose. And let's see the missiles here. They're painted everywhere but the post, which is okay, because I don't like it when they paint areas prone to friction. It's a bad idea. So overall, very cool. You get callbacks to both his on-screen appearance and his original toy. Now, where this beast mode falls apart is when you look at the bottom. You just have his robot head just right there. Just right there, just looking down and hanging out. Not tucked away, not turned around. It doesn't look great. <laughs> like, I wish like there was more you could do to, to hide that away, but that's, that's pretty much it. He's just looking down at the ground. Kind of like... Um, the Siege Megatron, right? And then you also kind of have the robot foot sticking out a little bit, which is kind of annoying, but not as egregious as the head issue. Overall, though, if you don't look at the bottom, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Like that you get some articulation in the legs. It's not a lot, but it's better than nothing. Though there are, like, kind of naturally molded positions for these areas where they, they rest on the ground better, kind of like that. Okay, now let's just get straight into the transformation here. So the first thing we do, take this little robot leg, just kind of pull it up out of here. This one you're going to pull out. You see kind of has the heel spur going through the tail. So you just slide it out like so. Now this tail, the two halves aren't really glued together. So when you push the foot up in there, it tries to push these halves apart a little bit. So just be careful there. All right, so you get all that going. Pull this out. Rotate the uh, waist around, fix the legs, flip the feet down, just like so. All right. Then take the scorpion head, little backpack area thing, pull it back as far as it'll go. Flip the scorpion head in, push it back up like that. Go ahead and fold the upper part of the legs back against the sides. Flip the shoulders down like so. Flip the head up, close his chest halves, push lower body up in there like that. Okay, hold on. <laughs> push 
push the upper lower body in first, then close the chest abs. My bad. Fix the arms. Like that. And then for the insect legs, just kind of do them one at a time here. Cross them over each other. Like so. Nice little crisscross thing going on here, alternating. Like that. Against the back. Back legs just kind of point upwards. And then you bring the tail up and put it in whatever position you think looks good. And pose him as you see fit. So here we go. This is our robot mode for Scorpionok. And overall, I think it looks pretty good. Very, very show accurate for the most part. Uh, the head sculpt is great as, you know, they almost always are on official toys here. Uh, I will say, and a lot of people pointed this out, he looks like he skips leg day. Like the way his proportions come out, especially because he has such a very wide little abdomen here, his legs do look kind of comically small compared to the rest of his body. And, you know, a lot of it is just kind of the illusion formed by the uh, contrast in the upper and lower body there, since his little pelvic area doesn't really like reach to, you know, the sides of his waist there. But I think his legs actually are a little bit too short too. I think based on, you know, kind of his body length, his arm length, his legs could definitely stand to be longer. Maybe if they had some kind of telescoping going on. Yeah, he, he's, he's kind of a little short stuff. So looks aside, as far as posability and tolerances, everything on here is really good. He's got the shoulders that swivel and they can lift up a little bit because of his transformation. He's got a swivel on the biceps, arms swing out. His claws actually swivel, which is really nice. You can have them posed different ways. Still get the accessories on the inside, which don't hinder the movement of these at all, which is really nice. Well, I guess uh, I guess they can kind of catch a little bit. So just be aware of that. They can catch. All right. At least the missiles can. The B might not. Uh, let's see. It's got the waist swivel. It's got your universal hips, high thigh swivel, single bend knees, and ankle tilt. And he doesn't. He has rocking, kind of. You see, this one can rock all the way, but this one, the heel stays in place. So, you get, like, I don't know, half ankle rock, I guess. And then the tail, of course, can just kind of bend at multiple points here, there, there. Get the little ball joint on the end. Heads on a ball joint, pretty tight one. So yeah, your, your standard stuff. And he does at least get the swiveling claws slash hands, so that's always nice. Uh, overall, despite the little stubby legs, I do like this guy. I mean, Scorpionok was always kind of a bit of a thug with small man syndrome, so this works out pretty well for him. And just for fun, here's a shot of Scorpionok with a bunch of his namesakes. You got the guy that started it all, G1 Scorpionok there. Got the Movieverse version, Transformers Energon Scorpionok, and even Robots in Disguise Scorpionok. So there have been a lot of different characters that bear this name, and they're all pretty wildly different from one another. And I think that about wraps up our look at the new Kingdom Scorpionok. Overall, I really like this guy. Um, he's not perfect by any means. There are some compromises made between his two modes to kind of accommodate each one. You know, the very obvious head showing in the scorpion mode really bothers me. The tiny robot legs look a little weird in some angles. I, I will admit, you know, in a more dynamic pose like this, he looks a lot better. Looks a little more proportional. Um, not a fan of the limited leg articulation for the scorpion. I'm not surprised by it by any means. But, you know, it's really obvious how far budgeting has pared things down since the days of, like, Beast Wars proper. Because a lot of those old uh, anthropoid uh, Predacons and all that. They had a lot going on with their insect legs. So it is a shame to see, but it's not the worst out there either. I mean, there's quite a bit going on. Uh, I love the Cyber Bee homage, and I also love the fact that he gets his missiles from the cartoon. And I think in both modes, he does a good enough job representing this character that, you know, we recognize from the old Beast Wars cartoon. With a bit of a modern twist, right? More realistic uh, scorpion head and all that. Not as cartoony looking. 
So I really like this guy, and I'm happy we finally get a new Scorponok after all these years, because this is the first proper toy of this character since, what, the McDonald's Transmetal? <laughs> I think that was the last official Beast War Scorponok toy. So I'm, I'm really digging this. He scales with the uh, Kingdom cast a lot better than the old Scorponok toy does. Yeah, he's, you know, not maybe not as exciting as the old toy, because I had a lot going on with it. But he does the job of what he's trying to do, which is just be a modern update to that classic character. So I dig it. I'm happy he's finally available. They're finally starting to show up and like online retailers, stuff like that. So, you know, if you like Beast Wars and you like Scorponok, make sure to pick this up. I think you'll be very happy with him. I'm also very curious to see how they're going to handle him in the Kingdom cartoon, because they already had G1 Scorponok in the previous season, and we have seen at least, you know, brief shots of this guy in the trailer. And it's really interesting because the Earthrise Scorponok, or G1 Scorponok, they, you know, changed his whole thing to just be, like, a member of a race of things called Scorponoks. And I'm wondering if that's going to carry over to this guy. I know some people said they saw more than one of the Beast Wars Scorponok in the trailer. I didn't quite catch that, but if that's the case, that's probably what they're going for, is they're just going to be a species, and he's just going to be, like, the evolutionary offshoot of the giant Transformer they fought aboard that space station there. Um, though I'm pretty sure that guy said he was the last Scorponok, so I, I don't know how that really works. We'll wait and see. Um, sadly, I don't think we're going to get the same characterization we got in Beast Wars. They're probably going to retcon this guy into Oblivion, but, you know, time will tell. Maybe I'm being a little pessimistic there. Either way, good toy. Whether you, in your head, tie it to the cartoon or you tie it to the old Beast Wars show or, you know, what have you, he's a lot of fun to play with, and I think he's a really great addition to Kingdom. Of course, that is merely how I feel about this toy. Now I want to know what you all think of Scorponok. Is he your cup of tea? Are you excited to finally get an update of this character? Or are you disappointed with him? Or maybe just not care about this character? And a lot of a lot of people out there just like hate Beast Wars and whatever. I mean, we can't all have sophisticated taste, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, honestly though, I want to know what you all think down in the comments section. So feel free to leave your feedback. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. If you'd like to become a member of the channel and join us on members-only live streams and be able to ask like certain questions during special monthly Q&As, and also just kind of get a shout-out for your support during those Q&As, uh, look for the Join button down below, and you can become a channel member for as little as $1.99 a month. I thank you for joining me for this look at the brand-new Transformers Kingdom Predacon Scorponok. With all that said, I will see you next time.